Version 12 relies exclusively on INI files to store settings. It also uses INI files to save data for exporting and importing. To avoid problems with formatting and default characters, when using different regional settings in Windows, version 12 forces all programs to use US-centric settings, as shown in the information on the screen. The browser has been redesigned quite a bit since version 10. Among the more important changes is including family associations based on the Nesvornianal 2015 classification, or on orbital elements as used by the Asteroid Light Curve database. Also added is the discovery information for numbered asteroids that is regularly updated by the Minor Planet Center. Another import improvement is that you can now customize the sizes, number, and contents of the fields in the ephemeris table which also serves to display opposition data from 1995 to 2050 on demand. The browser has several sections. First is the listing of objects, which can be from the MPC orb or user elements tables. The switch below the table switches between the two tables. As you scroll through the table, Detailed information is given for the current asteroid in the set of labels in the group box to the right. The albedo, diameter in kilometers, and taxonomic class are either known values or the adopted averages for the object's family or orbital group. The Nesvoni section gives the family association for the asteroid. If the fam number field is less than 9000, the information is from the Nesvoni et al. 2015 paper. If the number is greater than 9000, the object occupies an area of orbital space defined by its semi-major axis, orbital inclination, and eccentricity that are assigned as part of the Asteroid Light Curve database, also known as the LCDB, by Warner et al. The LCDB documentation on the web gives more details. The Discovery section gives the discovery information for the current asteroid, but only if it is numbered. The data are from the Minor Planet Center. The name ref field gives the MP circular number where the name citation was published. You can search for objects by number, name, or designation. In addition, you can filter the main list to include only those objects from a given family or orbital group, or based on a combination of orbital elements. We'll go to a live video demonstration for this section. Use the drop-down list to choose the type of search. Be aware that switching among sort orders can sometimes take several seconds. For the number sort, this is mostly because almost half of the objects in the MPC orb file are unnumbered, and so the sort uses the name as the tiebreaker. The starting point of a search can be important. The top option starts with the first record in the current sort order. Down starts with the current record and goes towards the last record, while up starts with the current record and goes towards the first record. Number searches are always unidirectional, starting from the top. Searching for the number zero always goes to the first unnumbered object in the list. If not looking for a specific name or designation, those searches should use top for the initial search and then the down or up option to continue looking for additional matches using the same search term. Note that when searching down that there may be matching records above the current record and, if searching up, that there may be matching records further down the list. The percent sign, not an asterisk, is used as a wildcard. This allows searching for a name starting or ending with a set of characters or that are embedded within a name. If no wildcards are in the search term, then the program looks only for an exact match. When searching designations, the wildcard can be used only at the end of the search term. A search for a specific name or designation is nearly instantaneous since the program looks only for an exact match. An exact search is case-sensitive, meaning that the search term must match an entry both in spelling and capitalization. Capital M in the search term will not match an entry using only a lowercase m. To search for a name that starts with one or more characters, enter those characters and then the percent sign. This search is not case-sensitive, which is one reason it is slower. 
a capital M and lowercase m are considered to be the same. To search for a name that ends with one or more characters, enter the percent sign and then those characters. Again, the search is case insensitive and so only spelling matters. To search for a string of characters within a name, enter a percent sign before and after the search string. This search is case insensitive, only spelling matters. An empty search term is not allowed when searching for an unpacked designation. Only the earlier discovered asteroids do not have modern designations. Note that the asteroid list does not show the designations. They are shown on the group box header and only for the current record. The search value cannot start with a percent sign. Generally, you will search by year alone or for the year and half month by using the first letter of the unpacked designation. As before, if a wildcard is present, the search is case insensitive. Use 1999 followed by the wildcard to search for all designations for asteroids discovered in 1999. This can take a few seconds since the program has to go through every record to find a designation that starts with 1999. Use a four-digit year plus a space and letter followed by the wild card to search for discoveries in a specific half-month of a year. In this case, the first half of 1999 February. There are many other designation search possibilities involving wild cards. This one looks for all the designations for 1999 February that start with CA. This table shows how asteroid designations are determined. Note that the letter Z is not used for the half-month lettering and the letter I is not used at all. There is no limit to the number following the two-letter designation, meaning that a designation of 2024ZZ600 would be the 15,000th asteroid discovered in the second half of December of that year alone. You can restrict the records shown in the list to those matching specific parameters. Click the Set Filter button to display a form to set the filter parameters. To save time, choose one of the preset options in the list. This automatically generates the SQL statement that will filter the records based on the orbital groups defined in the Asteroid Light Curve database. If you choose one of the presets, the check boxes are checked but each group box is disabled. When you've made your choice, click the OK button to return to the browser and then click the filtered checkbox. Be aware that because of the very broad definition of the orbital groups, some filters may return zero records when in fact such objects exist. One example is the Mars Trojans. The minor planet center listed nine such objects in their most recent list from mid-2019. In this example, we'll select Custom, which allows defining one or more of the filters. Do not check a box if you do not want to define a range of values for its group. We'll do all four. Check the box for each group and set the values as shown here. When you check the H, or the absolute magnitude box, you can then click the button to the right of the maximum field. This displays a read-only form with a table that gives the approximate diameter of an asteroid for given values of H and albedos of 0.06, 0.20, which is the default for near-Earth asteroids, and 0.4, which are very bright asteroids such as those in the Vesta and Hungaria families. Click the refresh button to show an SQL where clause that will execute the filter. The settings shown here roughly define the orbital space of the Hungaria asteroids with diameters on the order of 21 kilometers down to 2 meters. When done, click the OK button to return to the browser form. Use the filtered checkbox to toggle between using the filter and not. When checking the filtered checkbox, it may take a few seconds for the list to be filtered. Be patient. You can change the sort order from name to number for example. Again, it may take a few seconds for the list to update. When unchecking the filtered checkbox, the list returns to the first record based on the sort order.
you can update the MPC Orb file without having to start a separate instance of the MPC Orb utility program. Click the MPC Orb button to display the program. A separate, short tutorial covers using the MPC Orb utility. The general idea is to download the latest versions of the MPC Orb and numbered MP discovery files and convert them from text files to SQLite database tables. Sometimes, you may want to check on the visibility of an object that is not in the MPC Orb file. Click the AppMag button to display a form that can calculate the predicted magnitude of an object. Check the usage box if the absolute magnitude, H, is known, and then enter that value in the H entry field. The diameter and albedo values are ignored in this case. Uncheck the usage box if you know the diameter and the albedo, whether it's known, or can reasonably guessed, and enter the values in the D and PV fields. Enter the phase slope parameter into the G field. The default is 0.15. Then enter the solar phase angle, which is zero if the asteroid is exactly opposite the sun in the sky. Enter the sun distance in astronomical units. Uncheck the lunar disk box to enter an Earth distance in astronomical units, or uncheck the box to enter an Earth distance in lunar distances. When ready, check the Calc button to compute the estimated visual magnitude. Click the Close button to return to the browser. To compute a set of positions for a given asteroid, also known as an ephemeris, first locate the asteroid as described earlier. Enter the first UT date and time for the ephemeris in the first two fields in the right-hand panel. Then enter the total number of positions to be generated. Now enter the interval between each position, the value can be in whole or fractional days or hours. Check the days box to indicate the units in the interval value. In this case, we're using days. Check the geocentric box if you want the positions to be geocentric, that is as if the asteroid is being viewed from the center of the Earth. This works for more distant objects. For objects within a couple of dozen lunar distances, it's better to uncheck the box. The positions are then based on the longitude, latitude, and elevation given in the current profile. These are called topocentric positions. It is suggested that you check the LP values box. This generates positions with a precision of 0.01 seconds in right ascension and 0.1 arc seconds in declination and the UT time to the nearest minute. If the box is not checked, the positions are in thousands of seconds in RA and hundreds of arc seconds in declination, and the UT time includes seconds. Check the FM radio button and then click the Gen button to generate the ephemeris. The first time the program is used, all computed values are shown for each position. To filter which values are shown now and in the future, right-click on the table header and select ZF calls from the pop-up menu to display a list of all available fields. The characters after RA and DC indicate if the positions are J2000, B1950, or of date, meaning the equinox corresponding to the Julian date for the first position. Sun E and Moon E are the great circle distances in degrees from the Sun or Earth to the asteroid. Moon pH is the lunar phase where 0.0 is new and 1.0 is full. Positive values are between new and full phase. Negative values are between full and new phase. The longe and lat values towards the bottom are for the heliocentric, Earth-based, and galactic longitude and latitude. This is a live display of the columns in the table. As you make changes to the list, the table automatically updates to match the changes. When you check one of the boxes, its corresponding field in the table appears. If you uncheck the box, the field is no longer included in the table. 
To change the location of a column in the table, click on its name, not the box, in the list and then click the up and down arrow buttons to reorder the list. Click the OK button to return to the main form when you can now resize one or more columns. Move the mouse over the dividing line in the header between the column to be resized and the one to the right. Hold down the left mouse button and drag the mouse left or right to reset the column width. Continue until the column widths are to your liking. If necessary, you can expand the width of the form so that the table doesn't automatically reset to the first column. Note that you can change the order of the columns directly by holding down the mouse button while over one of the column headers and dragging the mouse to the left or right. You can also change the order of the records by clicking on some of the column headers. The ordering done this way is not saved when you save the column settings. Right-click on the table and select Save F calls from the pop-up menu to save the current table settings which includes the columns used along with their order and widths. Save the settings to a location and name of your choosing in the File Save dialog. The file name is automatically changed to put underscore f dot that at the end, so don't make that suffix part of the name you choose. Click the Save button to save the ephemeris settings. You are prompted if you also want to save the settings to the last underscore f file. If so, these settings will be loaded automatically the next time the browser is used to generate an ephemeris. Click the Ops Radio button to generate an Oppositions file for the current asteroid that covers the years 1995 to 2050. Then click the Gen button. The settings in the fields above the radio button are ignored. After a few seconds, the table is filled with the calculations. Changing which fields are displayed in what order and the column widths works the same way as with the ephemeris table. When done, right-click on the table and choose Save Ops Calls from the pop-up menu. You are again asked whether or not to make the settings the default for the next time the Oppositions table is used. Use the Save button at lower right to save a text file of the Ephemeris or Oppositions table data. You can save this file under a name and location of your choosing. Note that the file extension is forced to TXT. This concludes this tutorial for using the MPO Canopus Asteroid Browser utility to search the asteroids table and to generate an ephemeris or opposition data for one or more asteroids. More tutorials are on the MPO YouTube channel. Use the URL on the screen to find the complete list. Please subscribe so that you can be notified when new tutorials are available. If you have any questions or comments, please send them to the MPO Software Forum on IO Groups. Please note, you cannot attach files to messages. If necessary, you will be asked to send them offline. Thanks for watching.